Norma, eggplant cooked in olive oil with tomatoes and basil. I put about a pound of ground lamb in just a little bit of olive oil, two turns of the pan. For the eggplant itself, always pick up an eggplant that's firm and buy the one that's the heaviest. We want the eggplant in oh, kind of a little less than bite-sized pieces, a small dice like this. And then I season it with salt. I keep it in a clean kitchen towel and then just let it set for a few minutes and keep pressing down on it to get out the excess moisture and in theory, some of the bitterness. For the tomatoes, I use the tomato that's most delicious year round. Of course, we can use canned tomatoes. Okay, so we've got our cherry tomatoes. Um, we'll get to the garlic in a minute. I wanna talk about how we're gonna season the meat to taste like sausage. We're gonna start with some fennel. And I like to use a sprinkle of fennel pollen and fennel seed, but one or the other is fine. A little salt and pepper. And then we can use dried oregano from the pantry or fresh oregano. And it's about a tablespoon, good round tablespoon of fresh. If I was using dried, go more sparing. A third of a palmful or about a teaspoon of dried oregano is more than enough for a pound of meat. And then for the chili flavor, you can of course use chili flake, in which case I do the same thing as the oregano, one third of a palmful or about a teaspoon. Or I'm gonna do one heavy spoonful, two teaspoons to a scant tablespoon of Calabrian chili paste. Now for the, uh, the tomato paste in this, I choose to use sun-dried tomato paste because it's sweet and tart. And of course it's our thickening agent. So I'm gonna stir in a couple of fat tablespoons of our sun-dried tomato paste. Of course you can use regular tomato paste too. And then we're going to add either red wine. Uh, I like red vermouth, it's fortified wine and it's very rich and sweet. And as it cooks out and the alcohol is cooking off and the flavor concentrates, it's just the, what is that? Background flavor in the sauce, it's really fabulous. So we're gonna lift up all of the drippings from the meat with the red vermouth. We gather it up, bring it right over, and boop, goes right into the pot. Okay? Now we want to keep the integrity of this eggplant. We don't want it to turn to mush. So we're just gonna coat it with what's left of the fat in the pan, the olive oil and the drippings from the lamb, and we're gonna get those sweet sugary cherry tomatoes right in there and all of our, oh, several cloves, I'd say I did a whole bulb, five or six fat cloves of garlic sliced up into that mix. And then we're just gonna cook this a few minutes more, like literally like 10, so that the tomatoes just start to slump and the eggplant is tender but not demolished, okay? We're gonna add passata to make it as thin or as thick as you'd like the sauce. This is the tomato puree. So one large jar of passata or two of these little guys would be the maximum and you might want less if you want a chunkier sauce. Now that we've got this all together, I'm going to partially cover the pot, letting a little of the steam escape as the tomatoes cook down. The end, we throw in a few torn leaves of basil into our cherry tomato eggplant sauce. I drained the pasta a minute less than package directions. Always, 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 because you have carryover cooking, and that's what happens when we add the pasta sauce to the pasta itself, along with that starchy liquid. It's continuing to cook. We want every bite of the pasta to be the same and equally delicious. So we toss all of the pasta with all of the sauce. You move this into the bowl. And then you take a little extra of the meat sauce and put that down over the top. Then we take the giant bowl of the pasta and the sauce. We add the mint, the parsley, and the ricotta salada.